it's 2020 and I think it's time that we put our minds to something a little bit out of this world, someplace where all the problems of our society and our planet do not exist. What's shinier, this light or this bold spot on my head here? So the last shot just came in. Oh my God. Look at that right there. Astrophotography doesn't get any more dorky than that. Coming up next on the channel. What is going on guys? Welcome back to the channel. I am Chad. We're going to talk some astrophotography today. So, you know, I've been into not really astrophotography, but more like video astronomy for a long time. I've been around with it for the past eight or nine years back when we were using like modified security cameras and everything like that to get like color near real time images of deep space objects. Well, now in today's world, life is just insane. And there's a lot of cool stuff out there when it comes to astrophotography or as or video astronomy. And it's way easier than it ever has been. The costs have came down quite a bit and it seems like a lot of people have taken to the hobby here in 2020 since everybody's locked up. But I know that I have actually got into it recently again, and I've gotten bit by the bug hard. And a lot of it just has to do with accessibility. So let me show you t what I normally do. So this is my rig right now that I'm using a six inch Richie Crichton telescope, which is also known as kind of like an astrograph uh, telescope. Um, it's got a couple mirrors in there. Um, the camera here on the end, that's the ZWO 294. Then I've got the guide scope up there on top with uh, the ZWO ASI 290 guide camera. The only thing that's not on here is the little ASI air box that I'll show you uh, here soon. And you can just see my cables and everything. Things look a little bit different right now. Probably take a picture for you if I didn't decide to make this video at night, but I'm actually shooting out there right now. Then I'm in here in the comfort of my home, just watching everything come back on my iPad. Then I'm also just kind of going over and processing some of the data I've collected at the same time. It's just fantastic. Typically what I did done in the past is the live video astronomy. And I use this program called sharp cap by Dr. Robin Glover, and you can use this to image with, but it's a little difficult, but the great thing with these new modern cameras, I have, the ZWO ASI 294, which is basically one of the biggest selling cameras that there is. It's a one shot color camera. You don't have to mess around with filters and everything like that. You know, try to keep this to like a beginner type of level, but not like so beginner where it's like kind of brain numbing that a lot of videos I see when it comes to this stuff. It's kind of hard to make such a hobby like this exciting and all that kind of stuff. But if you want to check out a couple channels, Astro Backyard with Trevor Jones, Visible Dark, more of a technical type of guy, Dylan O'Donnell at Star Stuff. Those are kind of the, some of the guys that I follow. Uh, Dylan and uh, Trevor do some really cool things. They take you into like, the whole experience, you know, the thing is, is that they have really nice stuff. The one guy's got an observatory, just, you know, dream stuff that I would like to have. Some of it, maybe I'll own one day. Some of it, probably not, but I just want to kind of show people what you can actually do with a modest amount of money and not a whole lot of skill. Now I feel this video astronomy is the easiest way to get into this stuff because with this software, what it does is whether you're in super light polluted skies or any kind of sky, you can basically take short exposures with modest equipment. And basically this software will build up an image over time, say five, 10, 15, 20, 
30 minutes and your images will just keep getting better and better and better. And the great thing is, is that they of course are all in color. So if we take a look here at just some basic images, you can see not the prettiest, not the cleanest, but you know, this is the crab nebula in there. Nice detail, everything like that. I've shot the Pleiades recently. Um, this is about as big as I can get, but you can see it pulls out all this nice nebulosity and keep in mind, this is just sitting here at my computer. I've got like 150 feet of USB wire going out to my driveway, all feeding back into here off of that mountain setup that I showed you, RC6 uh, telescope and everything's just cool. You could just sit here and you can just zoom and go to any object you want to in your viewing that you can see that isn't obstructed all night long. You can just see as many as you want. It's just cool. It's a good way to get people involved. Uh, when I would take these setups to like star parties, like people love them uh, just because it's so engaging. But now I'm getting into the, the real astrophotography bug. And this is a picture of the Horsehead Nebula and the Flame Nebula that I've been working on over the past couple days. And this is like a real true astro photo. One of the first ones that I've ever done. I've done like little touch ups on the ones that I've gotten from Sharp Cap and doing like the live video astronomy. But you can only make those look so good. You can't capture all of this like great detail. You can't really filter out all the noise and everything like that just because you just have to it's a whole process um you got to put some time into it collect more data shoot with lower gains and longer exposures that type of thing so that's what you use these uh expensive crazy softwares like this one here which is called pix insight this is one this is basically like the photoshop of astronomy photography like there's a lot of different ways to do things you've got software that acquire your images software that run your guide scope and, and move your mount so your your stars are nice and perfect you have got software like this where you bring in all of the data that you've collected and you put it all together and then you process it and stretch it and do all of this kind of fancy stuff you know, make the noise look, go away and smooth things out and all that kind of stuff. And, uh, you know, you can see this image here. It's still not perfect. I've got some uh, egg shaped stars and everything like that going on. A lot of that comes down to, you know, just not having the best mount and things like that. But boy, I'm just super happy with the way this is going. This is like one of those things that you just never, ever stop learning. So I'll show you exactly what has changed everything in my life on why I have went this route. So if you see here, I am actually running my entire telescope setup outside on my iPad using an app called ASI Air from ZWO. The product is called the ASI Air. And what it is basically is like a mini PC that you just mount on your scope, put it anywhere, you can Velcro it, tape it, whatever. And it actually will do, run and do all of these cool software things for you. And then you take all the images that you get, and then of course you have to do this as well with the, the processing and everything like that. It does have a live stacking feature built into it though as well. So you can kind of do what you're doing with SharpCap, that I showed before, but SharpCap just does it way better and it's just a lot easier to deal with. So this is the ASI Air Pro that I was talking about. This is the little box that does everything. It'll power your mount, it powers your camera, the camera cooler, everything wires up into it. It's got like USB ports on the sides here that you can't see and all that kind of stuff. And then it basically has all of this software embedded into it that will do all of the things that you need to do to acquire images. And it's made life so easy because I literally just roll the thing out to my driveway and I have like 
three little dots where my tripod legs go. I turn on my mount. I, I'm already focused. Everything's all together. I just have it all rolled out and have it covered up. Dust covers, garbage bag, all that kind of stuff. So dust doesn't get in there. I roll it out. I take it off its things. I put the, the tripod legs on the dots, turn everything on, connect to the app here. And I do everything here with this app. It will do my polar alignment. So that way at the mount and everything rotates with the stars. So you get as round the stars as possible. I set it up to take all my exposures for me and it puts them all on a nice little USB drive and I can bring them in here, process them and everything like that. So it's just free. It's just fantastic. Um, here's a look at like the guiding, like I could do a screen record and stuff if I wanted to and show you this, but so it's basically controlling the mount right now and guiding on a star. And this thing works so good. A lot of stuff has changed in the past couple of years with astrophotography. We have like crazy filters, just insane cameras for really good prices. Uh, the other thing is the software development is just crazy. A lot of people talk about if you're in the FPV world, beta flight, open source development. You know, I don't really know if they have anything on these astro guys because I have seen just quantum leaps in the past four or five years with this Astro software compared to what happens with beta flight and stuff. I mean, I guess you can only do so many things with four motors and a chunk of carbon and a battery, but we've got this stuff in here now called like plate solving. So if you don't know the, the night sky, this setup is so easy. After I do my polar alignment, I slightly move my mount to like a star to make sure that it's focused. I tell it what star to go to and it will move the mount to where it thinks the star is. It will take a picture. Then it will compare that picture to a database and it, it measures your, your frames, your pixel sizes and all that kind of stuff. And then it says, Oh, you're off by a 10th of a degree or a couple minutes or arc seconds or whatever. It'll move, take another shot, Make sure you're centered and boom, you're centered like every time. I can't believe how good it works with this stuff. Now, sharp cap and everything has that stuff built into it. It's kind of like a standard now called ASCOM, which is uh, astronomy communications, I guess. And like your mounts, your electronic focusers, all that stuff all runs off of the ASCOM platform. And instead of having like a laptop out there now, running three or four different uh, pieces of software to like take the pictures, control the mount, do the auto guiding and all that. I have that little ASI air box on there that just does it all for me. So the hardest part is the processing, which I've watched hours and hours and hours of YouTube videos about it. The wife is probably sick of it, but she does enjoy the photos that I'm producing and she sees the happiness out of it. And, uh, She's pretty, I think, uh, surprised because when I bought the ASI last year, um, the camera, I, th I think she was expecting something like I just showed her today with, uh, this horse head and flame picture. Um, when I was really showing her those live stacking pictures and she was like, well, yeah, they're all right. But now that like, I mean, I'm not saying it's magazine quality or nothing like that, but when you're getting those quality of photos with just that little bit of effort. You can just tell how far things have came. So I'm just going to keep snapping away uh, for pictures on this stuff. I'm actually taking a picture of the Wizard Nebula right now. I've got about another hour on this run for it to start uh, taking uh, pictures before I would hit the Meridian. And at that point, I can do what's called a Meridian flip where it'll basically rotate them out to the other side and keep on tracking it as it goes past, uh, you know, zero degrees past the west side of the, uh, they call it the galactic or celestial uh, equator. But I try to like keep all my stuff over here to like the north and the east and everything. So I don't have to deal with that because you, sometimes you have to recalibrate and it doesn't work correctly. And I have my mount kind of weighted a little bit, so it will kind of, take the slop out of the stuff because it's 
I mean, it, it's an $800 amount. I know 800 bucks is a lot of money, but there's people that are out there taking pictures with $8,000 mounts and there's, there's definitely a big difference. So anyway, guys, hope you'd enjoyed this. I'll put some more astrophotography, video astronomy stuff on there. If you have any questions here on the channel, let me know. Uh, all that kind of fun stuff. So thanks for stopping by and we'll talk to you guys later.